was all about it. Stand up. Have you ever been there? Stand up. Testify. Well, howdy. Welcome back to Obscura Sloopa Presents. This is Howling 7, New Moon Rising. Some of you might be wondering what my favorite entry in the Howling franchise is. Well, you're in luck, because that's the one I'm reviewing today! Let's not try and fool anyone here. This is bad, and I mean bottom of the barrel bad, but this is the kind of bad you love to get. This is a masterpiece of incompetence, so much so that it turns around and becomes hilarious. But first, if you'll allow me, a little backstory. Howling 7 is the story of a man. A man with a dream. A dream of a grandiose howling universe where everything is connected, joining harmoniously into one big, beautiful cow pie. But Lupa, you say? How in the flying fuck does one make the howling sequels connect to each other? Through sheer bullshit and dumb fuckery, that's how. The visionary behind all of this was Clive Turner, who you might recognize as Ray in Howling 5. He was also a writer and producer for that one, as well as the fourth installment. Howling was his Frankenstein, if you will, and I don't know if he thought Part 6 derailed the whole thing or he was simply a madman, but he was determined to get Part 7 made. Not only did he direct, write, and edit it, but he also starred in it. I bet you're saying right now, wait a second, didn't he die in Part 5? I doubt summarizing the whole thing is necessary here, so I'll just let the opening dialogue do it for me. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Mother of God. Cut to the town of McDeserton as we meet Inspector Detective and Father Priest. It makes sense that the Inspector is looking into a murder, but we're also apparently told that the Father is an investigator as well of things the Church deems unsanitary. Ooky! Alright, here's where the first plot thread to tie all of the movies together is introduced. If you'll take a trip in the Wayback Machine with me, you might recall the actress who played Mary Lou in Part 5, Elizabeth Shea, who was largely credited for being the worst actress there. In fact, other than the archive footage in this installment, she was only in one other movie. And that movie was Howling 6. Holy free holy, really? This is pretty much the only tie-in for this franchise that I consider to be clever here, mostly because it made any kind of sense. During the scene in Howling 6, where Harker tries to get Ian to eat Winston's cat, one of the extras at the circus was played by Elizabeth Shea. Now, I sincerely doubt this was meant to be anything other than a sly reference to Part 5, since she doesn't have any other scenes or dialogue, but she was credited as Mary Lou, and it isn't a stretch to imagine her character being there. If Howling 7 was looking for a way to connect a couple of the movies, this may makes perfect sense. In fact, the murder Inspector Detective is investigating is a victim of Mary Lou's, who were to infer she killed after she left the carnival. What a snooze fest! I didn't start watching a Howling movie for the backstory. Clive Turner's character has just driven into town, but this time his name is Ted Smith. He goes to the bar, where we meet some colorful locals. Ah, uh, yeah, but I'll play most of the way. Your arm's tired? I only want to flap him. <laughs> that could give you armoritis. Uh, it's alright, I just had a bout of hepatitis. Yeah, a little bit further down your leg and probably get pneumonia. Hell, I'd be more worried about small cocks. Well said, last angry geek. And here we discover the true beauty of this film. When I said we meet some colorful locals, I don't mean we meet silly characters, I mean we literally meet the colorful locals from the town this was shot in. God's honest truth, there are little to no actual actors in this film. Take a look at this IMDb page. Everyone is playing themselves. I guess most of them aren't terrible, considering they don't really have to stretch themselves that far, but wow. Clive Turner, I salute you. The being that killed that man is none other than our adversary, the devil. Holy shit, were they talking into the night? I guess investigating a murder takes a bit of time, but they really took that long to come to the conclusion that the death was the work of the devil? The killer is a werewolf. I knew it was going to be a bad day when I got up this morning. 
Just gonna accept that at face value, huh, Inspector? Though I'm not entirely sure what a werewolf is. Oh yeah, this. There are two things you're gonna need if you're gonna survive a sit-through of Howling 7. One is a strong suspension of disbelief, and the other is an unhealthy love of line dancing. For whatever reason, perhaps because everyone is just that bored, the happening thing to do in this town is to teleport into another dimension and line dance like zombies. That's the only explanation I've got. And this is not an isolated incident I'm just nitpicking at. There are sequences like this sprinkled throughout the whole movie. And no one ever smiles. This is the most miserable line dancing I've ever seen. I feel like I'm watching Thriller while being dosed with opium. But all is forgiven once you're introduced to one of the greatest, nay, THE greatest, character of all time. Give me a drink, Jim. I need one bath. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel privileged to introduce you to Pappy. Maybe he's an alcoholic, maybe he isn't. They aren't really clear on if they wanted to make that a joke or not. But what I do know is, he is the most fantastic character ever. And the best part? He was a real dude. There really was a Pappy out there with his silly shirts, 10-gallon hat, and magnificent gray mustache. I maintain that he was an underappreciated genius in his time, much like Einstein before him, which is perhaps fitting since he looks a bit like him. What's this? Soda water, Pappy. Damn it, Jim, I wanted a drink. Damn it, I think I'm an alcoholic, but we can't be sure. First day, everything according to plan. Land the job, now I gotta find out about the town before they find out about me. <gasps> Another tip for surviving the new Moon Rising apocalypse is developing a taste for comic relief country music montages. And by that, I mean you have to fucking love comic relief country music montages. Just take this in, folks. This is mind-blowingly awful. This is the stuff my dreams are made of. It's funny because they're drinking? Hey, Jack. Looks like you've been getting your shirts out of Jackman's side of the closet again. <laughs> Aw, that's unfortunate. I hate to sound skeptical. I believed in Santa Claus till I was eight years old. Holy macaroni, they're still talking? This means they haven't stopped for two days now. Don't they need showers or food or anything? Do they just feed on exposition or something? Anyway, Father Priest starts to tell the inspector about werewolves, going all the way back to the flashback in Howling 5, complete with footage from the movie. Yes indeed, Howling 7 is also a clip show. The cheapness knows no bounds. Considering that a certain someone never writes down anything that he spends or drinks. Then get rid of them, Harriet. I don't want anybody around that can't do their job. Now excuse me, I have to go buy a louder shirt. This movie has been called many things, such as awful or an abomination, but few people realize that aside from being a cheap-ass clip show, this movie is also a romance. I give her the old rock and roll. A tale as old as time, song as old as rhyme. Clive Turner, another salute. Well, after that commercial break, it's back to the clip show. Father Priest is recapping the fifth movie when he's interrupted by the inspector. It's getting late. It's 12.45, and I'd really like to take a rain check on the rest of the story. I mean, I haven't taken a crap in two days, and you're really, really boring. God, this urinal's small. I wrote this one. The bottom of my heart. You reckon it's small, Ted? What? It's small, isn't it? You are a man of great words, last angry geek. But let me tell you, sister, that's one hell of a man. Ah, spoons, lady! You know where it's at! I also like the fact that they focus in on that when you clearly can hear no spoons being played. Oh well, maybe she was getting ready to see a screening of The Room or something. You know we thrill Thriller night You're fighting for your life inside a killer thriller tonight When Ted has to kick out a patron from the bar, we find out that he knows him and the man threatens to reveal what Ted really is. That'd be scary if anything had actually happened yet! By now, you're probably wondering if there's a werewolf in this. Don't get too excited, cause I'll show you what you're gonna see for about 99% of this movie. A point of view, monster? Lame! Oh 
Oh yeah, guitar riff vomiting. I don't know how that's possible anyway. There won't be another full moon for months. Why did I say that? Anyway, after the guy is killed, Ted breaks into his room and starts snooping around, finding a suitcase full of cash. Somewhere under that beautiful mane of hair lies a dark secret. Cheryl, one of the women from the bar, is looking over the scene with another woman and comments that she saw Ted sneaking around the place. That, coupled with the fact that they remembered him fighting with the man at the bar, makes them suspicious of his intentions. Jim, you seen Ted? I think he's over there. Good sweep of the eyes there, Jim. Ted, Cheryl was looking for you. She's over there. Okay, really? What was the point of that whole exchange? After claiming the death had nothing to do with him, even though she never really asked, Ted acts very inconspicuously. No. No, I was asleep. I was dead to the world. Sorry, Cheryl. No. The tour guide told the real story to a priest as he was dying. Alright, guess we're going into day three of the exposition-a-thon. And wait, a tour guide told the story of what happened in Howling 5? What tour guide? Who told them? The only survivors were Mary Lou and David. I don't think either one of them were going to be telling that story to a tour guide. Alright, the father and the inspector are going to need to take a break for a bit. Let's take this outside. Speaking of fridge logic, why exactly is the inspector still talking to this guy? Is this an official part of his investigation? Werewolf studies? Even if he buys the story, does no one on the force question what he's doing or wonder where he's been for three days? Alright, good break! Time is running out for us, Inspector. Time is running out, which is why we've spent three days telling the same story and having no sense of urgency. Very soon, it will be three years to the day since that Hungarian castle burned to the ground. Three years is the time it takes a werewolf to grow to full strength. Oh, bullshit. How would he know that and how does that matter to the story? And it makes even less sense when you find out who the werewolf is supposed to be. Once a werewolf has developed fully, then beholds its first full moon, it becomes engorged with an awesome new power. Oh, double bullshit. An awesome new power? What the hell does that mean? And no, there are no awesome new powers to be seen in this movie. How do you know all this? I've always known the theories of werewolves. Oh, well, I guess that explains it. I didn't want whiskey, I wanted water. Oh, that's the opposite of what happened before. Oh, fuck muffins, they can never get it right. You know what I'm talking about, Spoons Lady. I want you all to make sure you're sitting down. Because you're about to have your pants blown off. Say, stand up. Have you ever been there? Come on now, stand up. Tell us all about it. Stand up. Have you ever been there? Stand up. I love you, Pappy. And yes, folks, he did tell everyone to sit down just before he told them to stand up. Testify! Meanwhile, the inspector and the father are going on for night four, and Father Priest suspects that Mary Lou is still around. But what if she's in disguise? It's just that a disguise is really hard to maintain. Not necessarily, Inspector. Not if she has taken over the body of another person. Do werewolves do that now, Howling Seven? After Ted does some making out with his lady friend, he's attacked by one of the yokels from the bar and apparently knocked out with a knife to the throat. Anyway, after he's out, the yokel is killed by werewolf cam. Happy where's Harriet? Can't you see I'm cooking, Dolores? He's happy where is she? She's over at Cheryl. Happy there's dirt in the chili. <laughs> there's dirt in the chili. <laughs> Meanwhile, a few of the townsfolk have found the yokel's body and are debating what they should do. We should call the police. They don't need to know anything. Maybe we should ask Pappy. The police? Nah, they don't need to know anything. Let's just ask Pappy. I'm sure he's qualified to investigate a murder. In the end, they decide just burying the body to get rid of it is the best solution. Pappy, you know you got dirt in your chili? <laughs> oh, dirt in the chili. <laughs> the stars at night are big and bright. Deep in the heart of Texas. Pappy is not amused. Pappy, do you know there's dirt in the chili? <laughs> and 
you know what Ted does with that? He feeds that shit chili right to the suspender sweater combo guy. Hmm, suddenly finding myself terribly attracted to men with kooky hair and ugly sweaters. <laughs> I promise I didn't add these sound effects. The joke in the actual movie is that the chili gives him instant farts. Anyway, a posse of the guys in the town, and by posse I mean like three of them, is sent out to look for the mountain lion they think is killing people. Look, we're wasting valuable drinking time. Another good point, last angry geek. Going into day five, and the father is getting the shakes from not spouting any exposition today. Luckily, he gets a phone call. Hello, Inspector. No, father, it's Marie Adams. Nope! No, 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 no. The main character from Howling 4 is in this one. Alive. And well. And not a flashback. Triple bullshit! A bullshit on both your houses! In case you missed the review, let me show you again how that one ended. Richard! Yeah, sure seems like she survived that one, doesn't it? She's dead! She's so dead! Howling 7... Why? With some of the women suspicious that Ted has something to do with the murder, Cheryl discovers what appears to be a bloody shirt in the dumpster outside Ted's motel room. This isn't blood on the shirt, it's red paint. Paint would cover a man's blood on a shirt. Back in Yeah Right Land, Maria's invited Father Priest over because she's frightened of the werewolves, and we need more clips so the movie can pretend there's actually any werewolves in it. I had no idea that this place was actually a colony for werewolves. I wasn't feeling very well. Yeah, that narration is definitely not her movie. No one survived. Not even my husband. Yeah, sure, just gloss over what happened at the end there. That means it didn't happen, right? Is she actually in any sort of dilemma? All she did was tell him she's scared and she was attacked by werewolves that one time. Does she live in their town? Why didn't she go back to the city? And how does she know the priest at all? He shows Marie a couple of pictures, and she recognizes Ted as the tow truck werewolf she hit with her car. The only reason for this is because Clive Turner happened to play that extra, in a costume that makes him nearly unrecognizable. And yeah, I guess it's kinda neat that he was in the fourth one too, but using it for the story just makes it even more confusing and muddled. Because guess what? I'm gonna spoil it now, Ted's not a werewolf! I think I'll sit in here with my prescription beer When the single policeman comes to find out what's going on, yeah, thanks, Inspector, he questions Ted in a garage or something. After beating him up for a bit, Ted knocks him out and takes off. Oh, come on, they're just reusing werewolf shots from the fifth one now. If you're keeping track, the amount of screen time taken up by new werewolf footage in this one is zero. Ted is immediately caught by the Inspector while he's running away. So... So much for that. Here's where we get the exposition dump to end all exposition dumps. So exposition-y and so dumpy that some viewers may experience diarrhea. Ted explains that he was sent to the town undercover by Alpha Productions, <laughs> get it? Which I can only assume is some sort of bounty hunter business or something. I'm probably the only one who finds this amusing, but Alpha Productions in real life is a business in California that makes retractable awnings. Back to Howling 7, supposedly the town was harboring several criminals, so Ted was sent there to expose them, and the suitcase cash was his payment. The inspector decides to keep Ted in a guarded room until morning. Cut to Marie as she's attacked by werewolf cam. A. How did she know who Mary Lou was? And B. You brought her back from certain death just to kill her again? Da! The next morning, Inspector Detective and Father Priest are discussing the parts of the exposition dump we didn't see. Oh, you thought it was over. Ted claims to have not heard of Drago, so he couldn't have been there when Marie was attacked. Father Priest claims that Ted is actually a criminal who's killing to cover up his tracks, while Inspector Detective accuses Father Priest of having a guilt trip from ignoring a report from the Vatican four years ago. Using the information shoehorned in earlier about werewolves being able to take over someone's body, they believe that one of the townsfolk must be Mary Lou in disguise. Holy plot twist, Batman! The body being discovered was a mistake but the werewolf turned it to his advantage. All it had to do was play the aces of its sleeve. Ted was the first ace. He was allowed to escape from the castle without knowing the fate of the others. No! He did not 
cannot escape! Let me replay the end of that scene for you. Right there! There he is! Right in front of the fucking werewolf! There's no way he just saw that and wandered away all hunky-dory! No! Oh, and also, there's this scene! Marie Adams was a second ace. She was under the werewolf's mind control. Mind control? MIND CONTROL! WEREWOLVES DON'T WORK THAT WAY! With the town now against him, Ted thinks he's found rescue with Cheryl. But we all know who the werewolf is by now. That's right. It's Pappy. So Cheryl reveals that she's really Mary Lou, who was either turned into Cheryl or taken over her body, neither of which are things that werewolves actually do. It turns out that she was behind everything, including making up Alpha Productions, sending his co-worker in with the money, letting him escape Budapest, and showing up in Drago to make Marie think he was there. You know, this is a lot of trouble to go to when you could just kill him, right? And think about this for a moment. Why is she doing any of this? I mean, really, you'd think she's framing him for her murder so she won't get in trouble for the people she's killed there, but if she's been planning this since part four, then how would she even know any of this would happen? She'd have to literally go back in time with all of the knowledge she has now to pull this off. And if the idea was to cover up her murders in Budapest, the Count was already her scapegoat. No one suspected her of anything. What is happening to my world? Blank, Cheryl. We set you up. Just stop it, movie! Stop it now! I am not exaggerating when I say there's literally a minute left of the film. Could it be we'll finally see some new werewolf footage? Howling 7, you turn things back around! This is an amazing movie. I don't know how you see a climax like that and not laugh. The whole thing is one bad idea after another, and it all comes together into one hysterically awful shit pile. I do applaud Clive Turner for attempting to tie everything together. You could tell he really did believe in what he was doing, and perhaps that makes the movie more endearing to me. Sure, the werewolf looked like a Halloween mask, not a lot of it made sense, and the jokes mostly fell flat, but you could tell that this was a labor of love. And if all else was lost, at least we still had Pappy. And you know what? That's the last Howling movie! That was 1995! They never made another one, so I guess I can take the next week off! I want you. I wanted to say that for a really long time. What? So what is it about me? It's like the rest of the world's in black and white. You're in color. No! These aren't your makeup-wearing pens. He has vampires. No! You like your books are hard freaking core. No! You know we thriller, thriller, thriller night. You're fighting for your life inside a killer thriller tonight. Pappy, there's dirt in the chili. Pappy, you know you got dirt in the chili. Pappy, do you know there's dirt in the chili?